how do you take a raw live drum recording like this? and make it sound like this. So working with real drums is a lot more challenging than when working with samples. You firstly need to isolate the shells and limit the bleed from all the other mics. You may have phase issues as with any multi mic instrument and things like EQ and compression can be really tricky as you may not be able to be as aggressive or specific as you need due to things like cymbals bleeding into the snare mics. So in this video I will show you how I tackle these issues. And just quickly I want to let you know that I record and mix emo, pop punk, metal music and everything in between so if you want your music mixed by me then head over to terrybeckleyrecording.com and hit me up using the contact form. I will get back to you. The link is in the description. Cool, let's get into it. So in rock, emo, pop punk, metal etc, genres that I work on, the drums will be mic'd up and recorded a certain way. If this was indie or pop you may not have a specific mic for a kick, snare, toms. The cymbals might be mic'd differently. The rooms might be mic'd differently. So this is going to apply to having a specific kick in and kick out mic, a snare mic, a snare bottom mic, your tom mics all individually. And then you'll probably have a spaced pair um, for the rooms. And then most likely you'll have um, another spaced pair equal distance from the snare pointing at the edge of the cymbals. And you'll have probably a hi-hat specific mic. And then if you're lucky enough to have the mics available and the inputs available, you'll have a, maybe a china and a ride as well. So that being said, let's dig into what I did. Okay, so firstly, we have the kick-in mic here. So if I mute everything that we're doing, I'm going to have a listen to what it sounds like. So bleed-wise, that's actually pretty good. Uh, sometimes you'll get nasty, horrible bleed, which is going to mask the top end of the kick. And it's really hard then to get what you need out of the kick because you're just going to be boosting cymbals. So first things first, let's look at this Pro Q3. All right, so we're cleaning up just your general um, high and low pass filters. We've got a slight boost here at 3K to get a bit more presence out of it because as you heard, it was quite dull. And then there's this huge cut here at 1200. That's probably just something that's not very nice, maybe a bit boxy. Yeah, to me that sounds like a clock, like a, like a, the hands of a clock ticking. So I obviously wanted to focus more on that sort of 3K presence area and dip that, dip that 1K um, out of it. This is very much about cleaning up and getting as much of an isolated kick sound as you can. And then you'll notice that with, with live drums, you'll be missing certain things. That you, if you can't get them with EQ, that's when you want to sort of layer in samples strategically to give you a bit more presence and a bit more low end. And I'm sure we'll see that here. So next up, we've got the SSL channel from Waves. And actually, although this is primarily an EQ, I'm using the gate on it more than anything else. I've got my high pass filter here set to about 6K to really get rid of that cymbal bleed as much as possible. So you can see here, I've got my gate set and I'll be trying to get the most kick drum I can with the most tail, but without any of that other noise um, and sound from the rest of the kick. I'll have a play around and you can see what these settings actually do. Yeah, so that's really isolated the kick. If I um, mute this plugin, you've got all that room in there and that cymbal decay in there. This is rock. We want a kick drum. So that's why I'm setting this the way I have so that it is purely kick drum that we're getting. That's why the range is up full here. You'll see the threshold, which I would have brought back so that it was actually working um, with the level of the kick. And then the release will be how much of that tail you get. So you can have it really short, so you only get the initial attack, but you want a bit more, you know, it's a bassy sounding instrument, so you want more of that tail to come through. So you have to be very careful with these to make sure you get enough of that tail, but without the rest of the room and everything coming in. Let's reset this now. We'll put the range to zero, the threshold back, and we'll put the release down the middle. So you can hear you've got all the noise in the room and the cymbals. So let's play with the range and get it so it's actually starting to duck out some of that stuff we don't want. So 
So there, we haven't quite got it fully engaged, but you can hear it starting to duck out the, the space between the, the hits. That's why I ramp this up all the way like this. You can see that you're still hearing the snares and the hits in between the kick drums. So we, we want the threshold now to come down so that it's um, activating more sensitively. See, we haven't even touched the release really yet. We've heard it straight down the middle. So that's why this plugin is so good because the range you can you can quite easily get to where you want and then that in conjunction with the threshold gets you 95% of the way. Now we want to work on how much of the tail of that kick drum we want and that'll be the release. So that's as fast as it goes and you can hear it's really snappy but we're losing the end of that kick drum. So we're going to want to bring it back slightly so we can get that tail in it. And there we go, that's roughly how it's done. Those three controls on this plugin will do wonders for live drums and gating them to isolate the hits you actually want. But that is a very important part. I'll just show you that off and on again so you can really see how important this plugin is. Super important. Now that we have an isolated kick, we can start doing things like compression. Um, and not have it build up nasty frequencies with, with cymbals and that kind of thing. So as we've got here, really slow attack, or as slow as you can with the 76, to get as much of that initial transient through, and then a, a quick release, which gives it aggression, and we're trying to get into the sort of rock kick sound now where things really hit. So we'll, uh, we'll put this off and on. So you can hear how much more that hits with that compression on. And then we have a phase plug in here, which doesn't look like it's being used yet. But that's something I'll just stick on there just in case when we start to layer these kicks up, if they start to get out of phase with each other, it's important that we um, keep them in phase. Okay, so let's listen to the kick out. So this kick out track is a lot easier. You don't want, you don't need anything from the top end. All you need is that really low thud. So all of this bleed that you can hear here, we can get rid of that with a really aggressive low pass filter. Yeah, what bleed? So those two together. And then as you can see on the in phase plugin, I've actually flipped the phase. Uh, you always gotta make sure if, as you're bringing these in, if you suddenly start to lose bits, like you either lose the low end or they feel like there's holes in the sound, probably a phase issue. Flip the phase, see how it sounds. And then if that still doesn't really help, you can get into actually moving the samples back and forth ever so slightly to try and get the best phase relationship between the two drums that you can, or between the two mics that you can. Same drum, obviously. Okay, so you can see we've got some trigger tracks going on here. This would have been, as I heard the drums as a whole, I realized there was things I needed that I couldn't get out of EQ because of there being live drums. So this is where you sort of augment the sound of the live drums with samples. So this will be using contact. Yeah, and this is just the modern and massive kick drum here. Then we've got a trigger track here, which will come from actually using trigger. The trigger's great, and I've got the dream kick here, and then my dragged under one shot kick. I believe I do actually have that linked. If you wanted to download that, um, let me know in the comments, and I'll give you the, um, the link to the Google Drive folder. And then you can take that one shot. So let's see what it sounds like now with the samples added in. Okay, so all of those bust to a kick track, like I would in any other scenario where I've got different kick samples happening, all going to a kick bus and then mixing that as normal. So let's see what we got. Okay, a bit more surgical than with samples because samples are already, you know, sounding pretty clean off the bat. I've rolled off the low end here for the bass. I've boosted the fundamental of the kick. I've cut out some muddy frequencies with this being a live mic in a, you know, a room that might not have been a brilliant studio. So get rid of some of that mud. And then this here. And let's listen to this um, EQ on and off. And in particular, that big mid cut and what that gives us. So 
So that EQ as a whole really cleans things up. And we actually are getting into the territory of something you can put on a record. Initially, those live drums, they wouldn't have cut it. So there's quite a lot of work going in here, but it's, it's, um, it's really starting to take shape. Now let's just hear this big mid cut off and on to see what that's doing. See, that's where most of the magic is happening. That flabby mid sound, it being a live kick, makes it sound like a cardboard piece of cardboard. So you suck that out and you get a nice tight kick, good low end, good top end. Be careful though, you don't want to suck the life out of a kick. It becomes very um, typewritery and metal sounding if you do if you overdo that. Okay, compression, just like before. So you won't go into that. It's pretty much the same settings as, as well. One of my favorite EQs. We are boosting a shelf here at 2.5K, boosting a bit of that mid-range back at 650. Looks counterintuitive, but I guarantee there's a there's quite a big difference in how that boost sounds on the mag eq4 and then just leaving it untreated without touching it in the pro q3 or this eq and then a bit more of the sort of low end not not quite the fundamental but a bit more of that thud at 160 put this off and on again so you'll see what i mean quite subtle um i think that would sound more obvious when it's in with the guitars and everything it's just pushing bits through that need to come through then we've got the c4 which is a multi-band compressor just controlling the low end of the kick quite an important thing to do in uh, rock and other genres that have a big kick drum and then the r bass from waves which is a great for thickening up the kick and having the low end heard on sort of smaller speakers creates um harmonics around the 60th uh, around the 60 hertz fundamental frequency there and then you sort of blend it in slightly so it doesn't just become ridiculous let's hear that off and on I never like to go crazy with this plugin because it gets muddy real quick. But on small speakers, that would um, give that kick, that low end oomph that you probably would only ever hear if you had a decent set of speakers or a sub or headphones, etc. And then JST clip for a bit more of aggression. This would be a nightmare if you hadn't got rid of the cymbal bleed. But now that we've managed to shape it really well, we can actually use JST click to get some energy out of it. This really helps it sort of hit home a bit more. Okay, snare. So snare top. Let's have a listen to what we've got. See, that's a mess. There's so much bleed in that. Almost the whole kit you can hear down that snare mic. So we really need to work on that. And this technique I'm about to show you is a strange one, but it, it uses phase cancellation on the top end frequencies to do the best we can with a scenario like this. The band really wanted their real kick and snare usually with this much bleed you know you're, you're compromising your actual snare sound by leaving the, the live kick in you're best off sampling that live kick when it's recorded and then just triggering the sample but you know, you've got to respect what the band wanted they wanted this live sound they wanted a whole drum sound so this is what i did to combat the issues so first of all ssl channel again low pass filter to get rid of the low end and hopefully take some of that kick and rumble out as much as high pass as you could to get rid of the cymbals, but leaving the snap of the snare in there and then boosting at a lower point than I normally would. So here you can see I've got a 12 decibel boost around 1.78 uh, kilohertz. I'd like to boost a slightly higher than that, but it would be too much with the, the cymbals. It'd be boosting too much of the cymbals and then boosting the, um, the sort of thud of the snare just under 200 down here with a bell curve. But again, like the kick, most important, the gate. So let's hear with this plugin on. So what makes this extra tricky is you've got those sort of ghost notes in between the big hits that you can't lose. So normally with a gate, you could just really tighten it up and only get the big hits. But we want to keep all those little ghost note uh, one hand rolls that he's got going on there. So it's tricky. So we can sort of favor the sound towards the snare hits, but we can't kill everything else around it, um, which is why we had to resort to this, uh, to this next technique. So then we've got a compressor doing what we could again slow attack fast release to make sure we get the, the transient and the energy out of it same as before so let's hear that you can see how it's reacting to the big hits and nothing else that's what we wanted 
all the other stuff would just add up into noise and mess. And then here we actually do have a 2.18 millisecond shift on the um, samples of the snare. I mean, the samples of the of the sound wave of the snare, not a snare sample, just to shift it um, so that it is in phase with a, a future sample. Which is why you got here instrument two because it will be a sample added on later. Okay, so the magic happens in this snare gate track. I've doubled the snare, and as you can see, I've got this compressor here, which I'll go into. But here we have the same three plugins that we had on this one. And that is because I want the phase to be exactly the same. So I compressed it like this. Any stock compressor will do. Fastest, fastest attack you can have, fastest release you can have, full on ratio, so it's you know in limiting territory. But it doesn't quite work as well with the limiter. Not sure why. And I'm bringing the, the threshold all the way down, so it's really, really hitting the snare. Let me, let me show you. I'm getting that needle flying. It's all in the compressor. Then we've copied over those settings exactly the same as the other track to make sure that the phase relationship is exactly the same. And then we have this Pro Q3, which is doing the magic. So I don't want any, any of this low end to be affected. So basically I've rolled it off as far as I could so that I'm getting the most of the cymbal noise and nothing else. Then here I'm flipping that phase to cancel it out from the main track. So what I've done is I've compressed it fully to keep it all there constant. I've made it so that the phase relationship with the plugins is exactly the same. Then I've got rid of it so it doesn't affect anything underneath this curve here. So it's just this top stuff here and I've phase flipped it so that it cancels out from the main track. And let me show you what they sound like together when I add this in and how much it helps with the bleed. It's not going to get rid of it completely, but it definitely helps. So I'll start with it off and I'll put it on. That does wonders. I know it's darkened it a bit naturally. I'm taking out a lot of the top end with that phase flip trick. But the beauty of samples is we can add that top end back in with a sample and then get near to what a commercial record is supposed to sound like drum wise. So you notice I've got a live snare bus here. Let's turn this on so we're sending these to the live snare bus. And then we have a crazy EQ dealing with what I can and trying to get the most out of it that I can. Rolling off the top end again. Turn that on. And then a noise gate. Just trying an extra trick to try and keep it just to the snare hits. Remember those, those ghosts? hits those one-handed rolls there they're causing all the issues here but if you took them out you'd lose the vibe of the song so you've got to try and uh, compromise work with that stuff let's hear what it sounds like now so it's still messy but you can hear the rolls in there you're going to hear the cymbals because the gate's going to open when the snare hits and let in all that extra stuff as well but I think we did pretty good from where we started off to now. We've done what we can to get mostly just the snare sound that we want in there. And then once that's done, you can mix it pretty much how you would uh, under perfect conditions. Got some tape saturation in there. Some more EQ just to dip out some of these sort of honky frequencies. This is a great compressor for a snare. It just has the right release and decay and it sounds quite musical and it will react properly to snares. Then we have some EQ on the SSL. Not no, we're not engaging the um the gate this time. A bit more boom down here, a bit more oomph. Transient designer to try and get a bit more sustain out of it. So I've tightened it up with the gates and everything like that. So now I'm just trying to get a bit more of that gated sound just to sort of sustain a little bit more. Then an EQ, just a top end shelf. Once we've reduced all of that and made it quite dark, I'm trying to take that darkness and brighten it without reintroducing all of the snare, all of the cymbal noise and clip because clip makes things super cool. Piccolo snare, this was more for a different part of the song. So I've actually turned it off for this because it was just creating more noise. And now we have the snare triggers, the snare samples. So this is where I would have added things back to um, sort of compensate for how much damage we had to do to get rid of all the bleed. So I would have used on trigger two, my dragged under one shot snare. Again, I can make that available for you. Let me know in the comments. I'll give you the link and you can download that one shot. Okay, so let's hear what we've got now with the snare. So now we have a really big snare hit when the, when the snare is being hit. 
And then we have this um, slightly messy, but they're still in there for the sort of vibe of the song, those one-handed sort of ghost notes. So it's coming together. That in the context of the whole drums will sound like a drum sound. You'll get a live natural drum sound and it'll be strong enough to compete with uh, commercial records. And then also added in here, we've got a, a gated reverb. We've, we've killed a lot of the tail of the snare. So we'll turn that on so you can hear a bit more of what that's doing. Give us a bit more ring. And the snare bottom track, this will give us a bit more bite and sizzly top end. Super gated so that we only get the snare hits and compressed. With pretty much heavier compression but the same sort of attack and release as before. So let's hear the snare all together. So, um, you know, that's the best case scenario really for what we had. Let's hear it with the kick uh, and hear how it's sort of sounding, just the kick and snare. So that's come a long way from having all that bleed in there. We've managed to actually get some energy and, and the right sort of frequencies out of those drums that we need. Okay, so that was kick and snare. I think the toms... There's quite a lot of detail to the Tom, so I'm actually going to turn this into a three-parter. Uh, this will be part one, kick and snare. Next video I upload will be part two. That'll be the Toms and what I've done to to get those to work. Again, very tricky. Quite a lot of um, advanced stuff in there. And then part three, we can do the rooms, the overheads, and then the, the drum bus and how it all sounds together. So thanks for watching. If you want me to mix your next music, head over to terrybeckleyrecording.com. Contact me there through the contact form and I'll get back to you. Stay tuned for part two. See you at the next one.